There are some pretty big, significant voices on the China vlogosphere. This seems, it's not really a niche topic, but we want to get straight to the point. Okay, so in the description, I'm going to show you two uh, exhibits. One is this billionaire, Guo Wenguei, on a boat with Steve Bannon talking about, basically, he made an announcement that of this intention. I understand everything he's saying. And one of the interesting things is he says, uh, he refers to the Communist Party as uh, Liu, Liu, Liu Mang Guchendang, which means rogue, uh, basically thug, mafia, mafia regime. That's what he's saying. <laughs> uh, those two characters happen to be on my banner, by the way. Um, it, it doesn't mean literally mafia. It just means, you know, basically rogue, roaming rogue. Uh, but basically the point here is that I looked at, based on actual history, right, China is feudalism. The, I would say it's, I would say the current system is more, maybe if not feudal, if it's modern with technology, it's, maybe feudal is not the right words, it's dynastic. Let me explain why. There is this term that Western audiences have probably have, have never heard of before. It's called Hong Ar Dai, Hong San Dai. These are the exact polar contradictions of anything to do with Marxism. In a Marxist system, ideology, there are no inherent, there are no dynastic descent. So you, you do not have, see, the, the, the weird, the, the, the messed up thing is Westerners, they have no idea what communism even is. So, so you can, you can tell them communism is anything. You can point to a horse and call them and call it a deer and they'll believe it. That's the problem. They, they're, they have no education. But in a communist theory, there is no more hereditary. It's basically it. The ideal is to take the French Revolution to a polar to an extreme. There's no classes. There's no uh, orders of nobility. So let's get back to this Hong Ar Dai, Hong San Dai concept. This is a direct dynastic feudal term. It means first, uh, second generation elite, third generation elites were first were second generation red, third generation red. In, in a Marxist society, you don't have a system where there's basically a system of hereditary order. So, so let me explain how this is not communist. In a communist society, any hard worker, right? So basically, uh, you're a, you know, you're a coal miner. You work hard. You nobly apply f for membership of the Communist Party. You work your way up. You become uh, you know, a, a provincial, uh, a village chief. Then you become a township chief. Then you become a provincial chief. And theoretically, you become the general secretary. That doesn't happen because of the dynastic dynamic, dynastic dynamic. This is the complete opposite of communism where you have essentially an imperial family core, an extended imperial family core made up of the elites. You're, you're not going to be some random farmer or you're, you're going to be, you, you, you come for your, or your family's working class, you work hard, you apply to join the Communist Party, and you work your way. You, you have no chance, you have no place in the power hierarchy unless you're part of the elite. You have no place. You, to, you have no place in this story. It's so sad. It's not egalitarian. It is complete opposite of communism. So now we want to pivot to one thing. Guo Wenguei on a boat with Steve Bannon. To me, that's completely unrealistic. Okay. The, the people who have this idea, they're going to, or Agnes Chow, no disrespect to her, but I believe there's a fundamental disconnect between Western perspective and Eastern perspective. So for someone who actually knows the military history, the political history, things don't change in a land like China, not unless you're basically the leader of the National Revolutionary uh, Army, which existed, where the National, uh, you know, National People's Party, the that basically, you don't affect nobody, it, none of these Hong Kong activists ever had a chance. I think there's a fundamental disconnect where you see the Western audience immediately sees young people singing Les Mis, uh, Les Mis uh, you know, do you hear the people sing? This doesn't work in China. This is, none of this has any relevance in a land like China. Um, the only realistic 
so basically to Guo and Wei, he said, oh, I'm, he's going he's gonna to change the systems, create a new government. You and what army? I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but you have to understand how China works. Anyone who says, if you're on a boat with Steve Bannon, and you say you're going to overthrow the party, change the system, you and what army? Because that's how every dynasty has waxed and waned. Some peasant army. There's always an army. There's, this is a historical quote of Mao Zedong. Political, all political power, to paraphrase, all political power is derived from the barrel of a gun. This is a historical educational quotation. I'm not advocating violence, okay? But I'm pointing out the fact that there's a fundamental disconnect of Western perceptions. They see freedom activists, these young, what is it? Are, they look like 20 to me. Maybe I'm just old. Uh, basically, you know, full of ideals, full of dreams uh, you know, on the streets. That's not how China works, dude. Uh, that is complete unrealistic. To me, that's complete unrealistic nonsense. Okay. The only likelihood, again, so basically, uh, I want to I want to follow up Jennifer Jung. Uh, sometimes I think there are basically, you know, basically, you know, whether something can happen, whether something cannot happen. You, basically, I, I follow actual empirical history. I'm not, I'm not so. One theoretical possibility is the elites. Okay, so basically, if, if people got really tired of Xi Jinping. It's going to come from the power elites. It is not good. Agnes Chow, you are not going to ever have power in, in Xiangang or Beijing anywhere. So, you know, none of these young idealists have anything to do with China. This is complete Western imagination. So this is where I draw the line with Western ideology. This, the Western ideology is complete nonsense, completely unrealistic. So let's talk about realism. So basically, if, say there's, for example, in-party factionalism, uh, warlords, uh, you know, Bo Silai out leaps Bo Silai out of his house arrest. There's a, there's a huge uh, cadre of seniors behind him uh, and say a bunch of generals, you know, take his side. Okay, that, then, then something could happen. But what I want to put in the, the nail in the, in the coffin this this fantastic democracy fantasy of young people activists uh democracy activists this is that is not china that that has none of you have anything to do you are out of the power game you have you are you have in terms of realism i don't mean disrespect you have no place in this dynastic story this dynastic dynamic when you have basically this quote unquote imperial family war hong ar dai hong san dai um, basically, it is literally, these are hereditary terms. These are not Marxist terms. In a, in a Marxist society, you don't have an imperial, basically, an elite family that inherits power. So it's not direct family. Xi Jinping is not going to have, you know, he's not going to be like, uh, you know, my daughter's going to take over the throne or his son, he doesn't have a son, but, you know. But in all but reality, nobody, us, women don't, ascend power. This this is, I'm not advocating, it's just the empirical thing. There's something about the Eastern, the, you know, more of the traditional Eastern, you might say backwards, this dynamic. So just like, uh, you know, in North Korea, women don't ascend power. Um, so you have a system. What I'm talking about, why this is dynastic and not Marxist. In a Marxist society, again, you're a hardworking auto worker. You apply to the Communist Party, you're politically clean, you work your way up, eventually you become General Secretary and Staat President and the head of the Central Military Commission, three, combine the powers of three, right? It doesn't happen. You, no, no one who is outside of the quote-unquote dynastic family has any, you are not part of the story. No offense, but you have no place in the story if you're not part of the dynastic elite, which is, which is to emphasize the reality so when the, when the Westerners hear, when you hear people chant singing, do you hear the people, this, the, I'm telling everyone, this is complete nonsense. We need to be realistic. So let me, let me post a link in the description, Steve Bannon and Guo Wang Wei. To me, totally unrealistic, completely. Uh, I completely disregard that. It's to me, that's really, I, I find it entertaining, but 
you have no chance going gray. You and what army? Okay. Uh, Agnes Chow. No, you're you're out of you're out of the power equation. You were never part of the power equation. Um, the the only possibility is basically um, if there's some deep dynastic fissure within the society, out leaps Bosilai, who was potentially in line for the throne. Um, and again, I think Li Keqiang really embarrassed. Uh, he outshined Xi Jinping, and he publicly publicly embarrassed Xi Jinping. So you know, basically, I, I think he was sidelined politically, sidelined. Um, you know, basically, I, I don't want to read into anything, but in terms of, uh, you know, basically him stepping down, yeah, he got sidelined. He, he outshined his boss. He made, he embarrassed, he embarrassed him in front of billions of people. But what I'm saying is, no, I'm drawing a line. I am not buying this Western ideology nonsense where this idealism, do you hear the people saying, I am not, I'm not saying that. This, this is all nonsense. I'm focused on real reality.